I'm John Mather. I work at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center in uh, Greenbelt, Maryland, just outside Washington, D.C. And my job is to work on the James Webb Space Telescope as the lead scientist. Which means that I've been working with scientists and engineers for a long time to make sure we know what to build and that we build it. So now we're very pleased to be about to launch it. Well, it is a successor for the Hubble Space Telescope, so it is larger and more powerful, and it's also cooled down to a low temperature so that it can pick up heat radiation, infrared. So it's uh, light that comes from cooler objects than the sun, uh, light that comes from farther away in the universe, uh, because the expanding universe stretches out the light uh, to longer wavelengths. And it uh, also is, because it's infrared, it can go through uh, obscuring objects like clouds of dust in space, so you can see inside those beautiful places where stars are being born today. So it's all of these things, as well as being an engineering marvel. So we can look pretty far back. The universe is thought to be about 13.8 billion years old, and we think the first luminous objects after the Big Bang appeared in about 100 million years. So uh, that's what we're looking for as the first objects. We don't really know what they should look like. We think that they're individual stars, uh, maybe grouped together in miniature early galaxies, and uh, we're looking for those things that would be very faint, very, very um, far away, so their light wavelengths will be stretched out into the infrared. And um, very different from what we have today, that's our expectation. But we have to go look. Well, we are going to look at the places where we've already been looking with other telescopes. So. Um, there's a picture called the Hubble Deep Field, which was one of the first times that we just decided to stare at an empty place in the sky for a long time. And it was beautiful, and it told us that we still didn't understand our story. So many more galaxies than we thought they would be, and they formed much earlier in history than we had expected. So our hope is that we look in those same places with the new telescope. We see farther back in time, we see the precursors to what we have today. The very first uh, objects that lit up, uh, whether they're stars or miniature galaxies or even black holes, um, we'd like to know how do the black holes form. Either they came from the Big Bang or they were formed by galaxies or something like that very early on. And somehow, uh, you probably heard that every, every galaxy has a big black hole in the middle. And that, so we'd like to know how did that happen. So by looking far out in space, far back in time, we hope to see the universe as it was when it was young. And so that's number one objective. Uh, see if our story is about right. That's probably about right, but there's a lot of space for mi misunderstanding and mistakes on our part. So we hope to find them out with a uh, new telescope. Um, closer to home, we'll be looking at places where um, stars are being born today. Um, you know, the Orion Nebula, the the middle star in the sword of Orion is a place where stars are being born. It's beautiful to look at with a telescope because it's so bright, And but you see also these glowing clouds of gas. And uh, some places inside those are very deeply hidden by the dust. Right? New stars are happening now. We'll be looking at places like that. How did the sun get born? Uh, and especially, um, are solar systems common? Uh, we have been looking at planets around other stars for quite a while now, and we found out back in about 95 that there are some. Now that we know that most stars have planets, um, but we have not found anything that looks like our solar system yet. So we're really interested in that topic. Because if there are no solar systems out there, well, maybe uh, the conditions for life might be rare. On the other hand, um, maybe it doesn't have to be like the solar system. So, 
very, very interested. What I'm hoping that we'll do is we will be able to fill in the blanks in the history books of how did it all happen. Uh, we'll give you more and better pictures to uh, help appreciate the beauty of nature. Uh, we will answer a lot of tricky, hard questions of astronomy, like you know, dark matter and dark energy, which have been measured in a sense, but we can't see them. Um, so looking for that, um, trying to track down uh, current difficulties with measuring, measuring the expansion rate of the universe. We've got different methods that don't agree. Um, trying to find out more about um, planets and uh, how common are they and are any of them possibly alive. So in particular, are there any small planets the size of Earth that are the right temperature and have water? Um, it would be cool to know that. It takes about two weeks to get it all unfolded, about a month to reach the distance that we're going to be at, and then uh, altogether six months to get it all set up. And just to, I want to make a, sure everyone appreciates that this great project of ours is an international team project with Europe and Canada contributing big chunks of their budgets as well. And um, that's why we're launching the telescope from French Guiana, because the Europeans are buying the rocket. Part of the partnership.